In today's video, we're taking out the M20. So in this second part of the E30 VR6 project, I'm going to be finally removing the M20 engine uh, and transmission from the E30. So uh, just to give a little background on the project, uh, I purchased the car last year. Uh, it was running, uh, but it had some engine issues. The previous owner was saying that it was overheating it had a radiator leak um, so I did purchase the car in uh, knowing that I will be changing the engine somewhere in the future uh, so I was able to get a couple of times at the track I did drive it a couple about 1500 K's during the summer and finally on the last ride of last summer in late August I uh, had a bad overheating issue and then the car didn't want to idle correctly, wasn't responding to throttle, so I didn't really want it to fix the problem, so I just left it in the yard waiting for the time to come to start working on it and now the time has come. So uh, in this video I'm just going to be removing the engine, drivetrain uh, and also be removing the whole front end just so it's going to be easier to prototype uh, anything that needs to be done and have better access overall. So uh, let's get started. So first thing I removed the hood, that's just going to give me better access. And now let's start by taking out the fluids, so let's get it up on the lift. So let's get the fluids out. Uh, like I said last time, I took the car, it was overheating bad, so I was suspecting a bad head gasket. And when I started getting the coolant out, I don't know if you can see uh, clearly, but there was pretty much half and half oil and coolant in there. So uh, I think that uh, we, it's good to say that the head gasket uh, is dead. <laughs> so. Uh, good thing that I stopped uh, driving the car and was already projected to get the new engine in so you can see the container at first it was all clean all that black stuff you see is oil that came out from the coolant so just to help with that coming out just gonna remove the coolant hoses from the top then since I'm gonna be uh, doing a lot of stuff in the engine bay decided to remove the whole front end so get the grills off so I can get to the headlights so you have two little screws on the bottom and then it just flips up I have two screws one on each side of uh, each headlight assembly and then you can just pop it out and of course undo the light connector Then for the bumper, I have two bolts underneath the bumper, one on each side. And then you can pull it out. Uh, of course, you need to disconnect the side markers and also uh, both connectors for the flashers. These can just be pulled out. It can be a bit uh, tricky when you're holding on to the bumper. Maybe I should have done that first then center grill was with his hold with just two clips on the top and uh, I had a little screw on the bottom and then the rear valance that's held down by two bolts on each side and beneath the air ducts so as you can see this was a track car so the wiring is pretty rough so there's going to be some time needed to clean that out once the engine is in now for the MAF 
just to give me a little bit more room in the engine bay to access the engine mount bolts and then the radiator so two m10 bolts on the top and then you can slide the radiator out be careful not to hit the fins on the engine like i did as you can see a couple of fins that are broken so next you have the downpipes normally you have three bolts on each downpipe uh, those can be pretty hard to get to and are pretty stuck it was a little bit of a pain to get those out just be careful not to break the studs probably recommend uh, putting some penetrant on there but I got a little surprise when I was time to take them off the guy had actually welded the downpipes to the rest of the exhaust so got the saws all out and cut those off since I'm not going to be reusing the uh, stock exhaust anyway so here it is I had a clip on the muffler on the back and she's out pretty clean but I'm going to go single exhaust now for the drive shaft you have three bolts on the front of the drive shaft that connects it to the output shaft of the transmission you'll need to lock the wheels either ask somebody to step on the brakes or have something to get them unlocked and then uh, just be careful when you remove the last bolts uh, there's nothing left holding the drive shaft except the output shaft of the transmission so just be careful when you take that out uh, what I did is actually put a bungee uh, just to support it and we're done underneath the car so get her down now time to get the engine out of course you'll have the two bolts on each side of the engine to get the engine mounts unbolted and I would strongly recommend or probably you need an engine leveler because since you can't remove the front cross member of the car you're gonna need to get it at a pretty steep angle to be able to pass it over the rad support Of course you have a lot of connection, coolant, electrical lines to take off. Uh, you can get those off uh, as you go. I just started lifting it to get a little bit better access. And just slowly be careful. Here the use of my lift is pretty good. So I was just actually lowering the car instead of lifting the engine. What I did realize though is that it's pretty tight with the power steering pump. So uh, what I did is actually remove the pump uh, just to get better access. Now here you have the main harness. So could have removed it first, but since the engine is in the air, you have better access. So just remove the entire engine harness from there. In my case, this won't be reused since I'm going in another route for the engine so like I said removing the power steering pump it gave me a lot more room to be able to get the engine out so I'm just taking that out laying it out and then pull her out as you go just look if you forgot any wires any hoses, anything like that, and just go up, check, hold down, check, wiggle it around a little bit, and then finally she's out. We'll just lower her out, and then she's out, so full M20 with the jet drag transmission is out of the car, finally. Well, this was the first time I removed an engine from an E30, so it, it's a bit of a learning curve. So now I'll just have to clean all that out, give it a good cleaning, and then start from scratch from the, with the new project. So we'll get an adapter plate, motor mounts, and all that good stuff for the VR6. So uh, thanks a lot for watching the video. And uh, stay tuned for next part when I'll be uh, starting on the VR6. Thanks, guys.